I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today, today we are visiting with one of my dear, dear friends. And for those of you that have been with me for the last four years, you know we only deal with very good friends. So today is Representative John Mizuno, who is the Vice Speaker of the Hawaii State Legislature. Aloha, John. Thank you Aloha. so much for being with us. It's always Great. a pleasure. I was just talking to John to be sure that I had my memory right. We first met in 2006 when he was running for this office and we decided to support him, even though I didn't know who he was, but I wanted that we didn't care for the, his opponent. So the way to keep the karma clean was to support this young man that we didn't know, but he was such a nice young man that we decided we would support John. And so he's been a dear friend ever since. So that was 2006. So that's a long time. And we've been through lots of bills and lots of ups and downs together. So John, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, and the feelings are, are likewise mutual. Thank you so much for having me today. Yes. And what I would like to talk to John about is for, um, we just had an election and we have new people coming into the legislature. So John, you wanna talk about what it means, what the new session is going to be, who the new people are that are that coming into the session. So let's start with, with that. Now that we just had an election, who are the, how many new people do you have? Gosh, I, I apologize. I don't have that um, stat with me. But we, we do have a lot of new people. We had a caucus and they all introduced themselves and um, it's a diverse group, younger group, uh, very, very young group, outstanding individuals. They're chomping out the bit to go. And so we're very excited to have them. But I think it's gonna be a, a very um, interesting session coming up, especially amid the pandemic. Yeah, well, now that brings us to today, the pandemic. Now, the capital, is, is it still closed? Is yes. the capital still closed? Yes, uh, going back to your question, I'm sorry, Marsha Rose, memory just hit me. We have eight, we have eight, eight new incoming freshman legislators, which is a, a good size number. And yeah. so I apologize, but yes, uh, just that factoid, eight new incoming uh, freshman legislators to the house. Uh, going back to your, your uh, current question, yes, the capital is still closed and we don't uh, anticipate um, the legislature or the Capitol being open during the session, again, because of the pandemic. Uh, so because of health concerns, the, the legislation, the, the Capitol will probably remain closed throughout the legislative session. That's gonna be from January all the way to the end of April, first week in, in May. So will we be able to Zoom and watch what's going on? How will that work? How do yes. we... We, those of us that feel a need to participate, how does that work? Right, and you've participated in a number of hearings <laughs> and briefings in the past, and so that's not new. We will continue to have briefings and hearings on the bills. It's gonna be virtual. Um, I believe they're working out uh, a, a, an agreement with YouTube. And so, you know, we're gonna be doing Zoom and YouTube um, to have these hearings and briefings. So it will be, not exactly business as usual, but we're gonna to try to keep it uh, similar to what we've done in the past, albeit virtually because of the, again, the pandemic and health concerns. Well, so now, yeah. let's talk about um, if I, well, I'm not gonna do this, but if I decided I wanted a bill, if, cause I'm in East Honolulu and we call ourselves East Honolulu Democrats. If we wanted to propose a bill, we, we can no longer just come down there and ask you or any other legislator, say here, this is what we want. Uh, how would we do it now that we can't just walk in and out and go to- uh, The best way Marsha Rolls uh, Joiner would be to, to email that legislator that you have in mind to be the uh, 
champion or sponsor of your bill, and then follow up with a call. Um, because sometimes emails are gone through. Sometimes we'll get three, 400 emails a day. We might miss it. So on uh, two things, email the, the bill request to uh, your champion legislator and then give him or her a call saying, by the way, did you get my email? Uh, would you be able to introduce this bill for me? Can you have it drafted by your attorneys? And, and that should uh, do the trick. The, the reason I ask is that last year you had 3,000 bills, which is unbelievable. And there's no reason to think you won't have even more this year or at least the same amount, especially since you have new people and new people campaign on this is what they want and their community says, yes, that's what we want. So I have to think that these new people will and their communities will bring new bills. This, this is why I'm asking, uh, you know, the process, because I'm certain this is going to happen. And then the next part of that same question is, how in the world do 51 people deal with 3,000 bills a session? Good, excellent question. <laughs> and, and, and good points, good points made. Um, for 2021, we're going to scale it back significantly. So I anticipate we're not going to see the, the same allotment of bills that we had years past. Because we're, we're very um, pandemic centric, we're going to focus on getting our people out of this predicament, uh, making sure we've got the uh, vaccinations to people, um, continue to make sure we have thermal screener scanning and screeners at the airport, uh, protection for all people. And so this is really going to focus on COVID-19 and the pandemic and how we get our economy back on track safely. With that said, that's going to reduce the, the bill count because what's going to happen now is a lot of the bills that we're focused on would, would be just geared to COVID-19 reduction protection and getting our economy back on track. Because the state is in extreme deficit, we, we don't anticipate the members introducing um, appropriation bills, money bills. If any money bills come up, it would be by the uh, leadership of either the, of both the Senate and the House. They will recommend um, some of the money bills that we might be taking a look at, as well as a governor. But keep in mind, because we're in a deficit, you're not going to see new programs. In addition, another big thing, um, we're not going to, I would say this respectfully, we're not going to probably see any GIAs release, uh, grant aids, because yeah. we're deficit, we, we can't do anything. And, and that's where we might see some uh, difficulty and, and some of the nonprofits being significantly hurt because oh, I'm there's sure. just no help this year from the 2021 from the legislature. But now, um, while we're talking about this and the, the budget, I know that's not your department, but it, because we don't have the tax, we don't have the transit accommodation money from the hotels, what are we gonna do with the budget? Or is that an unfair question to ask you? No, no, it's not. I, you know, I, I don't have a crystal ball, but I will say this. We, we need to be very uh, nimble um, in 2021 and do all we can. So I would recommend pulling more federal funds down. For example, SNAP, formerly food stamps. Right. We get about half a billion dollars in federal funds and that's pure federal monies. There's no state monies attached to that. But for every $1.80 we get in SNAP monies, I'm sorry, for every $1 we get in federal SNAP monies to the state, it generates to the economy $1.80. So almost two to one match, uh, if you think about that. So we'd probably recommend uh, more SNAP monies to the state because they're gonna be more people in need, of course, because of the pandemic. Next, you may wanna look at or anticipate some revenue generating bills and, and people do not like taxes. I, I get that, I understand. It doesn't matter if oh, you're yeah. no, proud of or Republican, people do not like taxes. You may see some taxes, um, for example, gasoline tax. You may see some syntax come up, uh, syntax on tobacco and, and vaping um, products, in addition to maybe a syntax on alcohol so and sugary drinks. These were not popular ideas in the past and they're not gonna be popular now, but with the state uh, needing to fill its coffers because we just don't have money, uh, the revenue generating bills might will definitely come up and I don't know how positive we are about passing them. One thing that's good though, uh, it was talked about you know, extensively by our caucus 
the general excise tax, can we raise it to help social programs? We actually took the position that that's regressive. It's gonna hurt our people more than help. So we don't anticipate passing an increase to the general excise tax, um, just to let you know. Well, there's one that comes up every year and that's tax on food. That, it, that might be regressive because again, we have is. people that are, you know, uh, people are hungry, yeah. Hungry, lost their job. They're, they're trying to get uh, money just for groceries for their families. So yeah, that's that's probably gonna be um, off the table also. Well, let's uh, talk about what's going on today with the, uh, you have the uh, Keiki Caucus. What yes. is going on? Because the young people are growing up and having to do uh, school from home and all of these things. And while we're talking about youngsters, there's 22,000 people on Oahu that live in districts that do not have internet connection and that they don't have carriers that whoever knows why, but they don't. And so we've got children, young people who need internet because of their school to, to do this at home. What are we doing for them? And this is your caucus, Kiki caucus, yeah. Yeah, we really wanted to, um, use the money from, we believe the second stimulus check was coming, didn't happen. Um, but we were hopeful that so, a second stimulus check will come uh, in, the, in the upcoming session. If it does indeed come, uh, we're gonna work, we've got a, a group of legislators that wanna earmark a significant amount of that money to get um, the kids the iPads they need so they can be connected to their schools. For, for the most part, the the middle class and upper class uh, kids it's not a problem because they all have um, iPads, cell phones, computers. I mean they, they have access, so that's not a problem. The lower income kids don't, and that's where we see the disparity, and that's why we're trying to get some of the monies for this group of kids. But that 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 I'm sorry I didn't make it clear. It's not that they don't have the computers; it's that they don't have the internet connection. And right. I, it seems to me that as big a spectrum is, there's no reason that all everybody isn't connected. Right. Keep in mind, in addition to computers, cell phones, or what have you, you need to have the hotspots, and right. each hotspot is going to cost some money. So we've been working with public housing and Spectrum. Spectrum has provided some donations, but um, we're still extremely short. And so that's we, we in order to get those hotspots and if they don't have a computer to get them computers, it's gonna cost money. And that's where we're looking for the second stimulus check. I don't know how much money the state can um, provide on its own, but that is a big question coming up for 2021. Well, now, uh, Senator Schatz's office had a, a bill last year. I, I don't know where it went. And that was to wire rural uh, America. And you know, you know we have, a large part of Hawaii is rural. And I don't know what happened to that bill, but that was a lot of money. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but there, <laughs> there's politics, not only in Congress, but at the state capitol too. And unfortunately, you know, um, although the bills have merit, sometimes they don't pass kind of based on the um, majority of a certain house. And, you know, so, so um, Schatz is good. He's, he's got really good ideas. His bills are really good. We're very supportive. Uh, however, it's very difficult to pass anything out in the, uh, you know, uh, Congress and U.S. Senate. It's very difficult. Well, but he's a sweetheart, so you ought to talk to him because, you know, when you say rural, most people don't think of Honol of Hawaii as rural. All they think of is Waikiki, you know, and so it's hard for them to think that there are places in Hawaii that are rural. Agreed, agreed. And that's, some of those people are the hardest hit and they need the most help, uh, especially not only education, but when you talk about healthcare, about suicide prevention or stress or mental disorders or, or um, addiction. And that's where telehealth might come into play. But you're right. Unfortunately, rural areas in Hawaii uh, comprises of a significant amount of landmass and people. And those are the people that are least uh, likely to have adequate access to healthcare and education. So that's a good point. 
Um, and again, we cannot be city or Oahu centric. We need to focus on all rural areas. And so I, I agree, but it's not going to be easy. But I agree with you that that is a group that we need to protect and, and help out. Because, you know, even uh, on the Waianae coast, because of the mountains and the valleys, there are people back there that even if they had the money or whatnot, because of the terrain, they don't get the connection. Um, you know, it's just the way mountains are. Right. Um, no, I totally agree. Totally agree with you. And and so we, I, we, I but you got the connections with as big a spectrum as this should not be a problem. We're, we're they're, hopeful. They're to, advertising 5G. This, this this should not be a problem. Correct. And and so the, I've been working with Senator Glenn Wakai on that, and he's been rallying um, some of the members. So we're we're trying to do all we can to get Spectrum to be more on board and be um, able to provide such uh, access to the hotspots. So th this is an ongoing discussion. Um, again, though, I think unfortunately it might be um, a little bit of money involved and. And that's where we're, we're focused on maybe the federal funds. I don't know how much state funds can come out of the coffers to provide hotspots, but that's gonna be a, a big discussion. Again, it's gonna be a tough discussion, but an important discussion admin the pandemic and the fact that the state is in, in uh, dire need of money because we're in a de extreme deficit right yeah. now. Now tell us about the Keiki Caucus. What, what is the Keiki Caucus? What do you do? Sure, sure. Uh, historically, this Hawaii was the first state in the nation to actually um, have a chosen youth day that represents uh, the Keiki as well as the Keiki Caucus. It's the first Sunday in the month of October every year. And so important was it that the legislature even passed the second bill to recognize the entire month of October as Keiki Caucus uh, month for the entire state. And so we put a, a big premium on our, our keiki because we believe our keiki represents the most important resource in the state of Hawaii. Uh, they're our future. If we invest in our keiki, our future is going to be fine. And so we understand that. Um, the keiki caucus is comprised of advocates, uh, the youth themselves, the chosen youth themselves, as well as lawmakers. And we came up with a package. Now, I'm going to be going over the package with the um, entire group next week because we're gonna to have to probably take some bills out. If you remember, if you recall earlier, I said that appropriation bills are, are gonna be few if, if none at all from yeah. us. And so the Keiki Caucus, what they do is every year, they have a Keiki Caucus, caucus Summit. And you have uh, usually three groups of kids, maybe um, eight and under, maybe nine to 15, and maybe 15 on up to 21 or what have you. And they'll come up with the most, highly touted topics that they want to see in bills. And it's pretty unique. And every year or so, we'll pass one or two of these bills. And so we go back to the uh, the kids, the youth and, and the children and say, congratulations, your, your fingerprints are on this bill. So when they say, I'm not 18, I can't vote, we tell them, but your voices do matter. You, were, you had a hand in legislation and making a difference. So I can run through the 10 bills we have, keep in okay, mind. Good. Three or four of them might not make it because of the um, funding connected to it. But the kids, the kids are great. This is how um, how unique and, and advanced they are. So here's the rank. So the kids pick protecting the environment number one. That's their top priority. That's, that's they, great. They want us to have a bill to fund the fund and localize community-based composting recycling centers, and that makes sense because there's funding mechanism. Either we, we can't introduce it or we might introduce this as a study to see how we can uh, get donations to do this. Because again, the state doesn't have much money and so the appropriation bills are very difficult. But this is a very good idea. They, they wanna protect our environment. The second bill they had was equality, diversity and safety. They want schools to have quarterly town hall meetings with the superintendent to talk about bullying, um, discrimination against people of color, handicap status or LGBTQ. I think it's great. So the kids are standing up saying, we want this for our schools, our parents and the superintendent and all of us to meet. So I think that's great. The third one they had was uh, also similar to equality, diversity and uh, safety. They really wanted to uh, implore the Department of Education to talk about LGBTQ and issues regarding sex ed. They wanna start at fifth grade. This will be of course, 
age appropriate. It, it would, what a 15 year old would learn would not be the same as what you're teaching a fifth grader, but this is another one of their priorities. Another but, priority- but let, me, let me interrupt there. Sure. A fifth grader, if, if they are, they get bullied for being different. And so it's not just the 15, it's the, the little ones get bullied for being different. And yeah. so it's a good idea to start with the little ones. It is. And, and this is great that the kids uh, brought this up. So this was their third priority. And, you know, Marshall, you're right. They, they say that they want it to start as early as fifth grade. And they want, to, they want this to continue on through high school to encourage open conversation with everyone and to stigmatize the, um, the concerns with LGBTQ uh, sexual orientation. They, they don't want um, the stigma of, of something negative to be connected to someone just because they have a different sexual orientation. So I, I think it's the right step. And I, I'm glad that the kids are outstanding. This is really outside of the box thinking. And so we applaud them for that. And, uh, and you know, not only sexual orientation, but children with handicaps. They get bullied. I've seen um, people with handicaps, uh, developmental disabilities, autism, uh, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. In addition, I see some of our kids of, of color. I, I'll tell you, um, our people from Micronesia. Uh, oh, that's, sure. that's so things. sad, yeah. Monster Islands, they've been treated um, kind of, you know, almost to the point where they, there are fights, but sometimes um, it, it's difficult. I, I've seen kids that, yeah, and that's why we need to stop this because it, it shouldn't be. It, it needs to be fairness and equality for all. So that, yeah. I'm glad the kids have this. This is how um, forward thinking they are. Another, bill number four, their top four, their fourth priority is a focus on homelessness and housing. They wanna try to reduce homelessness and get more affordable housing um, by 2023. This is a great thing to do. And, and again, the chosen youth decided this is a top priority. So I, I think it's something we can work with at the legislature and craft a bill for them. Their fifth, and I'm, I'm going to go through the top 10, but their fifth was to focus on health, mind, and healthy body, uh, reduce suicide, work about address stress, depression, and other uh, needed uh, items for youth that are struggling. A lot of our youth, they, they can't, for whatever reason, talk to their parents, and so they need um, better guidance and counseling. And so they're reaching out saying, we need more help. Can we do this? And the answer is yes. So that's a big one. Uh, Marcia, you talked about the on, inner school online classes and students put that as their top six priority. As far as education, they need to have a system of online classes mm -hmm. that they can select to create highly customized schedules, but they need access to that. So that's another one that, exactly what you talked about, they, they've identified it as their number six priority. Um, number seven is similar to number one, protecting the environment. They wanna make sure that the communities work with the planning commission as they continue to do smart growth to ensure any growth or development is environmentally friendly. So again, environment is, is one of the top tier issues for the, the kids. Um, number eight is similar to number five, uh, health, mind, and body health. Uh, I'm sorry, healthy mind, healthy body, I apologize. They wanna talk about physical activity, especially admin the COVID pandemic and how we can um, allow for better outcomes health-wise by getting more fitness programs in the school. So again, healthy mind, healthy body. Number nine and 10 rounded out. Number nine again is with education. Uh, they wanna elevate the education in all public schools. They wanna make Hawaiian a core requirement throughout upper education for high schools. So they really put an emphasis on Hawaiian they want it to be a mandated uh, course to take uh, in high school. And finally- Can, can I interject, in, yes. interject? Speaking of language, uh, oh gosh, New Valley, uh, New Valley School, uh, Senator Chang and um, Representative Oh, why am I drawing a complete blank? Um, Hashem. They are in the process of creating at New Valley Intermediate School 
a, a whole thing of languaging, different languages, uh, Chinese, Japanese, other Asian languages, and that it is a baccalaureate uh, process. That's when they finish. And now throughout the school, they have Chinese and Japanese characters on the bathroom doors and throughout the school so that they not, not uh, you know, it's not just something that, that one school, but they want to do so that these kids can excel throughout the world to communicate without the world. So that that's already in the in the process, and it shouldn't be just one school. No, I think that's great. What Senator Chang and Representative Hasham are doing this this joint project. I think what happens with with a project mm -hmm. like that in New Valley is if it shows success, and I'm sure it will, then that would be considered a pilot project, and then we can start to replicate and implement throughout the um, state. And I would think uh, rural areas too, because again, we, we've often talked about the rural areas being underrepresented. And so it's a good start. And I think as so long as it's successful, we can definitely replicate that uh, eventually statewide. I think so. I think so. We need to, uh, John, um, if there's, and we're almost out of time, which is too bad because I love talking to you anyway. So are there any other things on that list that the young people are interested in? I'm repeating Did one we miss of them. anything? No, uh, no, no. Homelessness housing was another one, but it kind of replicates what we said earlier. So that's a list of 10. And that's why I'm, I'm so excited because uh, the kids are, are targeted or focused and they, they got a lot of great ideas. So hopefully we can turn some of these ideas into bills. And this, the city and county passed a um, amendment to the charter. And now they have a, a young people's organization, whatever it is. Um, and they are a little older, I think, than your, your young people. But they now meet with the city council and they are uh, learning how it, the, state, the city works. And it's a marvelous idea. I love it. It's on a ballot. I love it. I voted for it too. And yes. it's a great idea. Absolutely. So I think we're on the right track because this is a whole new generation, a whole new world opens up now and yesterday is gone. So this is great to see these young people moving forward because this is their time. Totally My agree. day is over. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, John, I, it's always, always a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. And we will, uh, you can count on it, be back to talk to you some more as the, ses as the session moves along. Thank you for having me, Marsha. Appreciate it. Thank Always you. enjoy working with you. Aloha. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>